uh, is in control. But outside of that, all the usual shenanigans apply. Our top news story, of course, will be the latest on the Rocky Reach fire. It was a good Sunday. We'll give you the latest from uh, the InsaWeb folks. Uh, it is a type three uh, management team is handling it, and that's, that's good. That means uh, access to resources. It was a good day yesterday on the Rocky Beach Fire. We'll talk about the latest on that, so we'll have the latest news. Also sports, Mariners stumble into the All-Star break. At least the Apple Sox pulled out a victory, but they're also stumbling into the All-Star break. Both the Mariners and the Apple Sox are gonna be taking some time off before they resume play later on in the week. We also have the obscure holiday today in history birthdays. Everyone is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. And also the interview segment will be with our friends from Guada, the Greater Wenatchee Area Technology Alliance. This is an interview that we taped with Jenny uh, back on uh, Friday. Jenny Rosanasatian, got it right, finally. I never get her last name correctly. You'll be hearing from Jenny in the second half of the show, all the cool things that Guada has planned before summertime rolls out. And it's gonna be hot, 96 was our official high yesterday. Keep in mind now, the high temperatures, the highs and the lows and the humidities and all that stuff, all the official weather statistics are kept up at the weather station at Pangborn Memorial Airport. So you, you know, you get closer and closer to the valley floor and it, it can get warmer, certainly. But the official high yesterday was 96 degrees on Sunday. We are gonna get triple digits today, at least 100, maybe even 101, hottest day of the year. We do have a heat advisory. Uh, it begins at two o'clock this afternoon. It goes all the way through eight o'clock tomorrow. Very warm temperatures, and that heat advisory is pretty much for all of Eastern Washington. Forecast details are coming up. Fire up the AC, and if you have outside plans, do it now, because it's going to be warm. Let's take you around North Central Washington with our Valley View cameras. We'll start out, of course, with the cross camera itself at the very tip of Wenatchee Heights. As you can tell, not quite as hazy as it was yesterday morning at this time. Of course, we don't do a show on Sunday. Thank you very much. But this is when the relative humidity is at its highest right now. Relative humidity, let me take a quick update. I, I is 46% right now. It's also 70 degrees already at the Wenatchee Valley, but the relative humidity at its highest. That means it's the best chance for the smoke, and most of the smoke that you're gonna see is not really from the fire, it's from the burnout operations inside the perimeter of the fire that's causing the haze up in the Birch Mountain Squawking Canyon area. Again, the latest on the fire is coming your way. In fact, I think we have live shots of the best three cameras we have on the fire. These were great tools over the weekend. A lot of people checked it out on our Facebook page. That's the Arondo Rock camera pointing down towards uh, where the fire started. You can actually see uh, the back end of Rock, uh, Rocky Reach Dam there. That's where the fire started just off the highway from Rocky Reach Dam and climbed up there rather rapidly. It was a very uh, dicey Friday afternoon. About 2,400 acres burned so far. Again, details are coming up. Now we have another camera angle, I believe, from the fire, and that's from the Omi Garden camera. That's uh, just on the other side of the fire. You can see the ridge that it climbed up. Still level one evacuations, by the way, in effect for the Birch Mountain area and Swakane Canyon. No, no structures have been damaged or lost so far. So that is a, a pulled back view of where the fire really got going on um, Friday afternoon into Friday night into Saturday. And I believe we have another angle, perhaps. I don't know which camera this is. That's the Waterville camera going all the way down to the lake. So it can't really make out uh, the fire from there, but it gives you an idea of some of the high clouds and the haze that we're dealing with with that residual smoke from the Rocky Reach fire. And again, the latest on that fire, and it is almost all good news, will come your way here in just a couple minutes. So there you go, a Monday morning look at the Wenatchee Valley on what's going to be a very, very warm, just kidding here, it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be very hot today. Let's do your forecast from the National Weather Service. Again, a heat advisory kicks in at two o'clock this afternoon, and it will last until eight o'clock on Tuesday night. Look at dry temperature today, 101. Uh, that would be uh, the warmest day of the year. Everybody, pr pretty much the entire eastern Washington area is under a heat advisory. That, of course, means uh, when they get to triple, ditch, triple digit temperatures and relative low humidity, uh, it just, it's just gonna be hot today and tomorrow. Now, there is a cold front, <clears throat> not a particularly powerful one, but it's gonna be just enough to cool us down to more temperate levels by the time we get to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Not a big dramatic cool down, just a little bit. As you can see there, Wednesday about four degrees cooler than tomorrow, and then a couple degrees cooler on Thursday, another degree cooler on Friday, almost, almost passable on Saturday and Sunday. And you see the overnight lows will be about 10 degrees cooler 
by the time they get to the upcoming weekend than they are right now. So it is going to be hot, 101 degrees. By the way, would not be a record. Our record high temperature on this date was 104 degrees. That was set back four years ago on July 16th, 2014. So the best way to put it, hot. And as we mentioned before, when they do a heat advisory, that means if you're outside at all in the afternoon hours, uh, you could run all kinds of dangers. You could run a uh, heat stroke could be a major problem. You got to be very well hydrated. You want to wear light clothes, white in color, uh, so it reflects the heat. If you can avoid the heat altogether, uh, just do it. Take lots of breaks, drink lots of water, hang out in the shade, or better yet, fire up the AC and stay inside. Just plain hot. Heat advisory has been issued uh, from, uh, from the National Weather Service. It starts at 2 o'clock this afternoon, goes until 8 o'clock on Tuesday night. There's no escaping the heat. All right, seven minutes after the hour, going to take a quick break. As I mentioned before, Steve Hare is on assignment. I'll be handling your news here in just a couple of minutes, including the latest information on the Rocky Beach fam, uh, fire. The news uh, this half hour and the news on the morning brought to you by our friends at Cascade Medical Center, trained with a physical therapist who loves the outdoors as much as you do. Cascade Medical Partners in your health. The physical therapists at Cascade Medical love the outdoors as much as you do. But sometimes where there's love, there's also pain. Let us help you get back to the activities that you love. Cascade Medical, partners in your health. Join me for Life with Lisa Bradshaw on NCW Life. It's not about my life, it's about yours. And now it's time for your local news update with Steve Hare. And once again, Steve Hare is on assignment today. I am Dan Koontz handling the news here. On this Monday morning, our top story this morning, not surprisingly, of the developments that have taken place over the weekend, the Rocky Reach fire, which started on the evening of uh, Friday the 13th, just off the highway right across the road from Rocky Reach Dam. That is a live shot of the general area of where the fire got going. Uh, it started burning in grass and brush, got going very rapidly. In fact, uh, threatened a number of residences. That prompted a level one evacuation notice for the Birch Mountain area and the Swakin Canyon neighborhoods. The initial response was Chelan County Fire District number one, Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest and the Washington Department of Natural Resources. And then they realized, well, this is a pretty complex fire, steep terrain. They need to bring in some more people. So they brought in a top type three interagency incident management team and they were mobilized on Saturday morning, July 14th. They are now in command of the incident. Uh, they had a good day yesterday. What you see on the screen right now is a map of the fire perimeter. Uh, the red indicates exactly how far the fire has gotten. And right now, uh, things are looking pretty good. Uh, the priority today is to close the last remaining section of the open perimeter uh, from near Birch Mountain eastward over Swakane Canyon on the northern flank of the fire. Uh, overnight patrols indicate that the fire activity yesterday and last night was minimal. No significant size growth occurred. Uh, in many locations, they're actually shifting to mop-up operations. They're going to be cooling any remaining hot shots, hot spots in the fire's interior near containment lines or structures. Again, no structures have been damaged at all. Nobody has been injured. The fire right now is at 10% containment. Uh, they're hoping for full containment by the end of Thursday, by the end of Thursday. Uh, the, the size of the fire right now is about 2,400 acres. It kind of goes back and forth because when they do burnout operations, it actually increases the size of the fire, but it's fires that were started by man who could that way they could keep the fire from growing. Four crews, 15 uh, engines, three dozers, a couple of helicopters working on it, some aircraft as well, 147 people uh, around the fire. Fire base camp, by the way, is at Sunny Slope Elementary School. So no real significant uh, occasions uh, for concern from yesterday. It was that they got a lot of work done yesterday and they did something new that they have not done in a, in, in a while. Usually when they try to figure out how we want to build our fire lines, how do we want to 
how to uh, do this fire in. They just they send crews up there and they have to hike a couple of miles for a couple of hours under steep terrain and it's dangerous with rocks and stuff like that. They used a drone. Yep, they took a drone up and they didn't have to worry about endangering firefighters and they flew a drone around yesterday and they figured out where they want to build the fire lines and where they want to bring them up there. It saves them a lot of time, a lot of energy, and it's very safe indeed. They could go back, they have video and photos of where exactly they want to attack the fire. Again, just to recap, what they're going to be doing today is uh, trying to close the last remaining section of the open perimeter of the fire uh, near Birch Mountain. They'll hopefully have the fire at least moderately contained. They'll be working on the interior hot spots. They'll be doing some more water buckets. Again, Highway 97A is open, but they're asking, but there is some poor visibility because there's still some smoke in the area. They're asking people to slow down, but not stop. They don't want any looky loos They want you to keep right on heading up towards Antioch or back towards Wenatchee. They're asking you to slow down, but not stop on US 97A. So all in all, pretty good uh, day, especially Sunday on the fire, as they mentioned before, and there's really no significant growth at all, and they're hoping to have the fire at least contained by the end of the day on Thursday. We'll keep a close eye on that. If anything uh, really dramatic develops, if they change the level evacuations, we will be sure to let you know. Right now, level one evacuation still exists for the residents along Birch Mountain Road and Swakane Canyon, but again, no injuries and no structures have been lost on the Rocky Reach fire. Other news as the summer construction season ramps up, Shalon County Commissioner is expressing concerns about higher than expected costs. Commissioner Keith Gaynor says it is an expensive bidding climate. The unfortunate thing with some of these bid openings that we've had, we have had some where we've had no bidders. And then we've had some bids that were way beyond the engineer's estimate and we've had to you know, reject all bids. So it's it's been a challenge actually to get some of these uh, projects get get contractors to do them and, and I'm not sure if it's because there's just so much activity and it's not a high priority for them to to work with the county projects or, or what but we're gonna we will be continuing to try and uh, you know get these projects cared for. Commissioners report that several projects are currently under construction. The Eagle Creek Road Improvement Project, that's been completed in the Leavenworth area. Crews continue to do some chip sealing work all over the county and Mission Ridge Road Improvements are also underway. Construction season is in full swing. Uh, if you're a U.S. military veteran in need of help, you want to write down August 4th on your calendar. August 4th, that is the date for the next stand down event right here in Wenatchee. The event is hosted by Vets Serving Vets of North Central Washington. One of the group's co-founders, Ron Bruno, says something new has been added to this year's stand down. Uh, we are hosting the stand down again this year, August 4th. The hours will be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m at the National Guard Armory at 1235th Street. And this year's stand down, we're hoping to be even bigger and better than what it's, something. <laughs> what it's been in the past. A uh, Couple of the new additions this year on top of the things that we've had in the past is we actually have a dental van coming. And when I say dental van, I mean a fully functional operational van that is going to be performing uh, immediate dental care that the individual veterans need. And again, it's, it's going to be basically first come, first serve because it's not that huge, especially to serve a full crowd like we're going to have. But that's something we're really looking forward to having this year. The stand down will also serve as a food bank for veterans in need. We will be uh, totally uh, deleting the food items that we have here in the bunker, bunker presently, uh, what we do have here, we give out all year long to the needy veterans uh, from throughout our whole community. So that's all going to be gone. It'll be turned over. So we're going to need to replenish that, add to that as things go on, as well as we have what we call a personal hygiene kits that consist of like toothbrushes, uh, soap, possibly shampoo and things of that nature that really went over big last year. So this year we've collected more and I'm still ongoing collecting those, you know, such as the little sample type products that you see in the hotels, motels. Nice, nice. People will just pick up and drop off and they really come in handy here. So folks, again, uh, the next uh, stand down coming up August 4th at the Armory on 5th Street here in Wenatchee. And uh, um, obviously, people can contact the bunker or 
any one of its uh, operators to learn more? Yes, they can uh, go ahead and stop by the bunker here, uh, check in with us, uh, give us a call down here. Uh, our number is 885-5558, and we'll see what we can do to find a place for you to help and assist. Uh, one of our local businesses, D.A. Davidson, their whole entire staff is coming down to support us and work at the stand down. So we're looking forward to the joint relationship with them as well. The stand down again Saturday, August 4th at the Wenatchee Armory on 5th Street starting at 9 a.m. Well, as I mentioned before at the beginning of this forecast and the beginning of this broadcast, it's going to be really hot today, 101 degrees. We have a heat advisory and that means dogs and cats and pets and cars are just a bad combination. Our very own Megan McPherson visited the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society to discuss, to discuss the dangers of leaving your pet inside your car. Hey guys, Megan here with the NCW Life Channel. We are here with Renee Parkins, the Development Officer of the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. And Renee, uh, sometimes people like to take their pets with them when they're running errands and their cars and the temperatures are super hot. Um, do you have any tips on how to keep your pet cool in the car or should they just leave them at home and not take them at all? Yeah, we just recommend in this hot weather, basically anything over 70, that if you're going to be out and about and out of your car, to leave your dog at home. It's just, it's, it's too hot. It's not safe for them. And especially some dogs are a little more acclimated to the heat than others. But as a general rule, it's just not a good idea. Um, for instance, on a 90 degree day, which I think it's at least that right now, um, after 10 minutes, your car will be 109 degrees inside, even if your windows are cracked. So, um, you know, the only thing I would say is if you are going to have your animal, make sure you leave your car and air conditioner running. And if you see an animal in somebody's car and the windows are up, sometimes you might feel like breaking the window open, is that ever a good idea? That is not. Um, contrary to kind of the myths that have gone around social media, the only people that are legally able to break a window open for a pet is animal care and control or police. Um, otherwise, you can be held liable. But there's another component to that that we also don't think about. And our first instinct is wanting to get that animal out of the car, out of the hotness. But if you break a window, you don't know how that animal, especially a dog, is going to react. If they're going to be super protective of their car, and now you've got you know, an angry dog in your face, or they could get scared, jump out, and now they're at large, and that puts them in a completely different danger, um, dangerous situation. So, so it's just best to call the police, call Animal Care and Control, and we can come take care of it. All right, thank you, Renee. Yeah, thanks, Megan. Megan McPherson, NCW Life News. Thank you very much, Megan. We appreciate it. 19 minutes after the hour, once again, uh, we'll lead off with our top story. Just a quick little update on the Rocky Reach fire. It's still under a uh, type three management team, an interagency management team, which means they have quite a bit of resources. It was a good day yesterday on, on a Sunday, uh, according to the latest press release. We only got this maybe about 90 minutes ago, so this is pretty recent. Uh, they, they report fire activity minimal. Uh, minimal and uh, no significant growth occurring. They were able to really establish some fire lines, do some burnout operations on Sunday. They continue to work on it again today. Nobody has been injured. No structures have been lost. Still level one evacuations for Birch Mountain and Swakane Canyon. Still helicopters doing some water drops, so be careful about that. And again, on US 97A, it is open, but they're asking people to slow down through the fire area, but not, I repeat, do not stop and take pictures. It's simply isn't worth it. All right, just about 20 minutes after they are 69 degrees in the Wenatchee Valley, 101 are high today. We have a heat advisory. It begins at 2 o'clock this afternoon and goes through 8 o'clock on Tuesday. A reminder, the latest news is also available to you whenever you need it by going to our website, ncwlife.com. ncwlife.com. Also, you can watch any of our programs on demand whenever you need to. We also have a Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and Type in NCW Life Channel in your search engine, you'll find us. That's also a great way for you to get a hold of us. You can send us a message on our Facebook page. You can email us directly at news at ncwlife.com, news at ncwlife.com. Great way to get all of us. If you go to our website, you'll notice that there's a contact us icon. Go ahead and click on that. You can either submit a news tip or just send a hi if you want. Or you can give us a call at 888-NCWL, 888-NCWL. That's any number of ways for you to get a hold of us here at the NCW Life Channel. And don't forget the news with Grant Olson comes your way at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock tonight. 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock are the three best ways for you to consume your news on television, your local news, 
on TV. If you like to watch it on demand on your computer or your tablet or your phone, you can do that as well. We'll get the news up and running just about 5 o'clock Monday through Friday. Also available on our Facebook page. Sports is coming up next. The Mariners stumble into the All-Star break. Uh, the Wenatchee Apple Sox stumble into the All-Star break. Both of these teams could use a break and they're getting one this week. Sports is coming up. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. I'm NCW Life News Director Steve Hess. Catch us on Local Tell Channel 12. You can watch us on Charter Channel 19 or stream us live on ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Where we cover the local high schools, the Wenatchee Wild, and the pro teams out of Seattle. On Saturday, we have a 90% chance of rain. Catch it all right here on the NCW Life Channel. Did you know that our pets can put on extra weight just like us? Obesity is the most common preventable disease in dogs and cats. Your pet's excess weight can lead to health issues like joint pain, arthritis, diabetes, high blood pressure, and more. Dr. Shauna Bayes and the staff at Paws and Claws Veterinarian Hospital care about your pets, and they can help you keep them lean and healthy. Call Paws and Claws today at 888-PAWS or find them on the corner of 4th and Isle in East Wenatchee. And we are back in this Monday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, 16th day of July 2018. I'm Dan Coons. Sports, Jake Taylor's three-run home run at the top of the 11th inning. Gave the Wenatchee Apple Sox a 6-3 win over Bellingham last night. Also snapped a four-game losing streak. Trailing 1-0 in the second, the Apple Sox, J.T. Schwartz smacked his first home run of the summer. It was a two-run shot. Wenatchee added another in the top of the seventh, and Isaac Barrera's RBI base hit, but the Bells would strike back in the bottom of the seventh inning with a leadoff solo home run by Connor Mack and an RBI base hit by Grant Holman. That tied the score at 3-3. The game remained tied at 3 until the top of the 11th. Evan Williams and J.T. Schwartz got aboard. Taylor stepped up. He was pinch hitting, and with the ball in the strike, he delivered the game winning blow. The win helped erase the pain of dropping four in a row to Bellingham, including a 13-1 decision on Friday and a 2-0 loss on Saturday at Joe Martin Field. So Wenatchee enters the WCL All-Star break. They're 2-4 and four in the second half. They're 13-19 and 19 overall. Four Apple Sox will represent Wenatchee at tomorrow's West Coast League All-Star game. It's in Port Angeles and our four All-Stars, Corey Meyer, Mesa Marenko, Curtis Bafis, and Jeremy Yelland. In fact, the skipper of the North Division, Dar uh, Darren Westergaard of Port Angeles, has named Curtis Bafis of Wenatchee as the starting pitcher. Good for him. Uh, the WCL South coach, his name is Brooke Knight of Corvallis. He's going to go with his own pitcher, Landon Beruso, for the start game time in Port Angeles, 6.35 tomorrow. By the way, Wenatchee will host po Portland in the first of three games starting on Wednesday. Lish, la, the uh, Les Schwab uh, scoreboard, West Coast League Baseball on Sunday. Zach Taylor was 3-4 for four with a double and a couple of runs to lead Corvallis to a victory. 7-1 over Port Angeles on the mound. Brendan Beck improved a 1-1. One one. He went five and a third innings. He allowed one run, five hits, and five strikeouts to earn the victory. Austin Bell's walk-off RBI double in the bottom of the 13th gave Cowlitz a 6-5 win over Victoria. That game at Story Field, Dutton Elski's three-run home run of the eighth tied the game and eventually sent it into extra innings. Michael Frias and three other Portland pitchers held Kelowna to just three hits and an 8-2 win at Walker Stadium. Gio Diaz continues swinging a hot bat. He's 2-4 for four with a home run and three RBIs for the Pickles. Yakima Valley's game at Bend was stopped in the eighth inning on Saturday because they had lightning. The Pippins came out on top, the final 12-3, and they swept the weekend series. West Coast League now takes a couple of days off with their All-Star game in Port Angeles. They're going to hold a very interesting home run derby today at 4 o'clock at Hollywood Beach in Port Angeles. Players will actually hit baseballs into the water near the Port, Los, of, uh, near the, uh, Port Angeles Pier. That's kind of cool. The actual All-Star game, by the way, tomorrow night at Civic Field at 635. Mariners, Trevor Story's walk-off home run at the bottom of the ninth gave Colorado a 4-3 win on Sunday over the Mariners. Colorado sweeps all three games from the M's. Over the weekend, Seattle got off to an early lead, a couple of runs in the first inning. Mitch Hanniger's RBI base hit and Denard Spahn's RBI double. 
But the Rockies tied it in the drizzling rain in the third, an RBI base hit by Nolan Ariando that Hanniger couldn't handle in right field. That allowed another run to score. Manager Scott Service says even though Seattle limps into the All-Star break, they've lost eight of their last 11, and they were swept by Colorado. Manager Scott Service says he's still pretty positive about their 58-39 record. Well, the, the break could come at a better time for us. Unfortunately, we got limped into it. But uh, I'm really proud of our club. I, I am. I think we've had a, a really nice first half of the season. Uh, these guys continue to compete all the time. Certainly, we had the game right there. Thought we had a good chance to win this one today and get off on a little bit of a high note. But uh, uh, we put ourselves in a position uh, by the way we played uh, in the first half to, to you know, be in a good spot here down the stretch in the second half. And, you know, hopefully get where we ultimately want to go. And that's into the playoffs. This team certainly has enough talent to do that. And we're grouping up, talking to the guys right now. Uh, I think the big thing is to go take the four days off, go clear your mind. Uh, you know, so you get mentally refreshed and we come back on Friday and get after it. The Mariners will send four All-Stars to our nation's capital for the All-Star game tomorrow. Nelson Cruz, Mitch Hanniger, Gene Segura, and Edwin Diaz will play in the Major League All-Star game. Pretty much everybody gets a chance to play. It's back to an exhibition now. Seattle returns on Friday to host the Chicago White Sox to begin the second half of the season. To the Les Schwab scoreboard, look at the rest of the American League West on Sunday. Manny Machado, Homer, in Baltimore took two of three from Texas with a 6-5 to five victory on Sunday. Detroit hit four home runs off Justin Verlander, and they beat Houston 6-3 to three at Minute Maid Field. Verlander has lost his last three straight starts. Oakland put together a four-run fourth that fueled a 6-2 to two victory over San Francisco behind Sean Manena, so they took two of three from their Bay rivals at AT&T Park. Clayton Kershaw fanned eight. The Dodgers beat the Angels Sunday in the battle of the L.A. area team. So here we go. It is the All-Star break. Seattle is five games back at Houston, but they're only three in front of Oakland in the American League West. The New York Yankees have a five-game lead uh, for the Mariners for the first wild-card spot. The A's nipping at Seattle's heels for that second wild-card spot. The All-Star game tomorrow at Nationals Park in Washington, D.C. And that is sports at 28 minutes after the hour. It's time for the obscure holiday of the day today. Every July 16th is Fresh Spinach Day. Now, Spinach Day itself is in March. Fresh Spinach Day, because it's in the middle of the spinach growing season, is today. Popeye was right, by the way. Popeye the Sailor Man. Uh, spinach is one of the healthiest foods you can possibly eat. And the reason for eating uncooked fresh spinach is that's when its nutritional value is at its highest. When it is fresh and uncooked, you get all the good stuff. Spinach is simply good for you in any way. Put spinach in a salad. Uh, you can eat it just like it is. You can just pluck it and eat it. Actually, I think fresh spinach tastes better than cooked spinach, but that's just me. Uh, eat spinach today. Eat fresh spinach today. How today was named Fresh Spinach Day, July 16th? I don't know. Fresh Spinach Day. It's as good as it gets. It's good for you. It's cheap and it's an ample supply. Eat fresh spinach and be like Popeye, the sailor man. Except don't date olive oil, it gets him really upset. 29 minutes after the hour, let's do today in history. Uh, it was on July 16, 1941. 77 years ago today, Jolton Joe DiMaggio. He went three for four at the plate to hit safely in his 56th consecutive game. Of course, it is still a Major League Baseball record. Make it 56 in a row for the Yankee Clipper Joe DiMaggio against the Cleveland Indians in Cleveland. How did do Joe do the next day? Tune in tomorrow to find out. Joe DiMaggio, 56 games in a row now. It captivated this country back in the summer of 41. Nobody knew this happened, just a very few people did, but basically the atomic age began on this date 73 years ago. The photo you're gonna see is the actual test. There it is. The United States successfully detonates a plutonium-based nuclear weapon in the middle of nowhere, out in New Mexico. On this date, 73 years ago today, it was nicknamed Trinity, and it worked. And from that point forward, July 16, 1945, until August, uh, they, they put the whole thing into high gear and pretty much put an end to World War II, but they also changed the world forever when they realized, okay, this works. The atomic age is officially 73 years old today, and it's not going anywhere. And it was 19 years ago today, July 16, 1999. He was on his way to visit his cousin Rory, who was getting married that weekend at Martha's Vineyard. I'm talking about John F. Kennedy Jr. 
piloting a Piper Saratoga aircraft, died when his plane crashed in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Martha's Vineyard, also killed in the crash. His wife, Carolyn Bissett, and his sister-in-law, Lauren Bissett, were also killed. Their bodies were recovered a couple of days later. They were buried at, at sea. JFK Jr.'s plane went down at the Atlantic Ocean on this date in 1999. And finally, at 31 minutes after the hour, we got a couple of birthdays for you. The first coach to win a National College Football Championship and a Super Bowl is 75 years old today. Jimmy Johnson, only three people have ever done it. Jimmy Johnson with Miami Hurricanes and the Dallas Cowboys. Barry Switzer with the Oklahoma Sooners and the Dallas Cowboys. And of course, Pete Carroll with the Southern California Trojans and the Seattle Seahawks. Jimmy Johnson, the first of the only three coaches to win championships at both levels, and he won a lot. Jimmy Johnson, 75 years old today, living the good life now. Happy birthday, Jimmy Johnson. And Will Ferrell is 51 years old today. There is Will, of course. He got his big break in Saturday Night Live back in the 1990s. Uh, the movies that he made after he left Saturday Night Live, the first four or five, I thought were hilarious. Anchorman, uh, Talladega Nights, you know, The Legend of Ricky Bobby, Step Brothers, The Other Guys. Those were pretty good movies. Elf, you know, Blades of Glory, stuff like that. And then lately his movies have gotten worse and worse and worse. Now it's just Will Ferrell cutting up in front of a camera. And he can do better. I still think he's funny. He just he used to be funnier. Will Ferrell is 51 years old today. I could, I could say that for just about anybody. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, everybody is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. We'll find out what's on Mike's mind. And then uh, my conversation with Jenny Rosa Hostetian. I think I almost got that right. The executive director of Guada. They got a lot of things going on over the next month or so. It's always great to talk to Jenny. Jenny, of course, hosts Guada TV right here on the NCW Life Channel. That conversation with Jenny is also on the way. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley, live this morning from Studio 15 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. I have a doctor who knows what they're talking about. It's just so much more hands-on and friendly than anywhere else I've ever been. It's really great to walk into somewhere where you feel welcomed and you feel accepted. We've just been grateful for the care and respect that we've been given there. And here when I come to visit my doctor, I'm not afraid to ask questions. It's not just about getting you in and out. I love my care. It's CBCH. It's awesome. Give it a try. <laughs> Hello, Wenatchee Valley. Christian Shanlin here with Bay Equity Home Loans. Make your dream of building your own home a reality today. Bay Equity Home Loans has teamed up with Real Homes to make building your new home a smooth process. Bay Equity Home Loans of Wenatchee offers new construction loans, FHA 3.5% down, and VA 100% construction loans. Stop on by or give us a call today. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. Club Crow is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Crow Saturday nights. We have live bands to rock the night away. Club Crow is bringing comedy to Cashmere. Check out our Facebook page for upcoming dates. Live jam session first Sunday of every month. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. Welcome to another edition of Herod's Cookhouse Field to Table. Outdoorsmen have been providing fresh food for American family tables for generations. Hunting and fishing is a way of life for our family, and we enjoy cooking delicious fish and game meals. Oh, that's awesome. We want to share our recipes with you. This is Herod's Cookhouse Field to Table. Watch for new episodes of Herod's Cookhouse Field to Table, starting Saturday, June 30th on the NCW Live channel. Oh, hey, Nate, what you doing there? I'm just reading a book. A book? I didn't even know they made those anymore. Where'd you get it? Right down the street at Yield Bookshop. Yield Bookshop, I'm gonna go check it out. If you're looking for a good book to read or you're in the market for some beautiful handcrafted creations from local artisans, look no further than Yield Bookshop right in the heart of downtown Wenatchee. Hey there, Wenatchee, I'm Sean Lee, and I'm inviting you to come down and check out what we're all about at Badger Mountain Brewing. 
Great beer, good food, and an endless source of entertainment for the whole family. Our Honey Blonde beer is flying off the shelves at your local grocery store. But I tell you what, it's even better on tap. And while you're here, try our signature badger sauce with one of our delicious meals. Whether you're in the mood for a wrap, salad, pizza, or nachos, Badger Mountain Brewing has what you're looking for. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody, everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, 75% of us Americans consider ourselves Christians. Well, that's great, but our tendency as Americans, particularly those on the political right, we, we tend to mix our Christianity with our patriotism, and that's a big mistake. I mean, love of country is fine, but if my patriotism causes me to somehow justify something other than love your neighbor as yourself, as somehow concurrent with my faith, I've crossed the line, and that's true, particularly in this day and age. Because of course, when Jesus identified your neighbor, he was telling you to consider it was who you deem most objectionable. God is not gonna protect or bless America at the expense of any other nation. And there's absolutely no reason to believe that America has a special place in God's heart over and above anyone else. I mean, I love being American too, I don't. But doing so doesn't trump my faith. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Vamanos Junk Haulers are pleased to announce they've added moving services to their list of ways to make your life easier. Vamanos Moving Service. No move is too big or small. In fact, Vamanos does it all. Vamanos employees are experienced at moving your home, office, business, and storage. They'll carefully load and unload your belongings. And for the do-it-yourselfers, Vamanos also rents trucks and cargo trailers. Call Vamanos Junk Haulers and Moving Service today to schedule your free estimate. Boating is a great way to bring family and friends together. At Bobfile Boats and Motors, they have the boats for any lifestyle, fishing, wakeboarding, or just relaxing on the water. Buying a new boat is more affordable than you might think at Bobfile Boats and Motors, online at bobfile.com or on Sunset Highway in East Wenatchee. Bobfile Boats and Motors, we're dealing. Bobfile's gonna make you smile. to celebrate every season with award-winning dining, full-service spa, and 170 waterfront guest rooms. Come experience our tradition of hospitality at Campbell's Resort on Lake Chelan. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local, independent, trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. And we are back on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Anytime the good folks from Guada have a moment or two to drop by this program and say hi and play a little catch up, we always make a point to make it happen. Of course, Guada, an acronym for um, uh, Greater, Greater Wenatchee Association of Ticks and Aphids. You know, close. Greater Wenatchee Area yeah. Technology Alliance. But you know, it's okay. You know you... what, Kat? I got the wrong notes. <laughs> I, got the, I was thinking the other Guada folks were coming by. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. But we'll wing it, Janie. Okay, sounds okay. good. Everybody knows my guest, uh, the Executive Director of Guada, the Greater Wenatchee Area Technology Alliance, Jenny Rosenfluss-Uchistin. Rosenfluss-Uchistin. That's what I said. That's How right. are you? We'll, we'll work through this together. <laughs> okay, I'm very uh, good. Let's start with Shop Talk real quick. Guada TV, how's it going? You liking it? It's going fantastic. Yeah. We love being on the NCW Life channel. It's a lot of fun. We get to highlight members, talk about relevant topics. Um, so uh, it, it's good to be uh, on air with you today and come from the uh, interviewee side. So what's it, I mean, the, the secret's out now. Hosting a television show isn't real hard, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of... Well, 
you know, I it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh -huh. That's what I would say. Okay. Um, but I don't have nearly as much practice as you do with a show every single day. So I'm still That's working true. through the kinks. My show's not very good. You probably figured that out. Her <laughs> show's a lot better. Uh, first of all, uh, the most recent thing to talk about is um, the uh, the nominations are in for the big event of the year, the big uh, Innovator Awards uh, luncheon, which is coming up, and so. The, the nominations are in, the process is closed. You got over 30 for all the different, what, five categories? Yes, we do uh, five different awards at the Innovator Awards Luncheon. Two for business, we recognize a tech savvy business through the um, Innovative Tech Business Award, and then Entrepreneur of the Year. So um, those were our kind of our foundations as a nonprofit. But as Guada has grown and um, the, you know, the reach has grown, we brought in education. So we also recognize STEM Educator of the Year, as well as a Future Technology Leader, which is a K-12 student, mm -hmm. and a Problem Solving Innovator, which is a college student. So five great award categories. So the nominees are in, and anybody could have nominated anybody, and now how does this process work when you narrow it down from all these nominees to three to one? Walk me through that. Yes, so the Innovator Awards Luncheon, it's gonna be our 18th year here in September, and the nominations come from the community. So those are driven from uh, anyone from a community member to an industry partner. They submit the nomination. And then Guada has an advisory committee, which is made up of, uh, we've got accountants, attorneys, uh, techies, educators, uh, parents. Experts in their fields. Absolutely. Um, and a real variety. They then assess the nominations. Uh, dig into each category area and they make the selection. So what's really cool about the Innovator Awards is while Guada hosts this, I can't talk, while Guada hosts the event, it's really from the community. So it's community nominations, it's a community jury, and then we just get the honor and privilege of recognizing those innovators in the five categories. Well that sounds like it's the way to do it. It is, and yeah. then it makes it neutral. So yeah. I didn't select the winners. It was really the nominees came from uh, peers in the community, and then we've got a great team of advisors who review each one. Uh, how does one get on that committee, by the way? Because i got nothing going on for a while. Well, you know, you always reach out to, to <laughs> okay. myself or okay. Becca, our communications manager. Okay. We'd like to bring in volunteers in a variety of capacity. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's pouring beer at events, and sometimes it's sitting down and doing a business assessment. So a wide range of volunteer opportunities opportunities with our 501c3. You said pouring beer in advance and then I just kind of I lost know, concentration. Right? There. Wait, <laughs> I try to start with the fun part first <laughs> and then I talk about the paperwork. Well, speaking of fun, the luncheon itself, and we've covered the luncheon here on the NCW Live channel, been a part of it, uh, it's, it's kind of a party even though it's a luncheon and it's on a, it's fun. It's a good it's a good get together, isn't it? Yeah, whenever we put together an event, we try to keep it high energy, um, high impact. We want you to learn something, but we want you to have a good time while you're doing it because Otherwise, people aren't going to come out in droves to our nonprofit mm -hmm. anymore. So we have over 350 people who come. Uh, it's from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. But as you mentioned, it's high energy and gets you inspired. You get to hear the stories of people from our community that you may not be involved with. And the fun thing is, and this is really important, that's a lunch and it's in the middle of the day. If you if you don't want to wait that long to party with the Guada folks, go up to the Highlander on, on August 2nd for the real blowout. That's right. <laughs> we host a summer social every year because our members are um, a, a wide race, range of members, I'll say, but we have work with a lot of entrepreneurs and tech businesses. And uh, we want to host a summer social and a holiday party because these individuals don't necessarily have thousands of employees at their organization mm -hmm. where they can do the informal networking and relationship building. So we throw the big summer party and holiday party for our community. Um, we're really excited that Subsplash, the newest tech company ah. in Wenatchee, has sponsored it along with Savvy Data Centers and Centricity Global. So it's going to be a fun event out at the Highlander. I got a chance to talk to the guy who's running Subsplash. He seemed to have his act together. Yeah, young guy, a uh, 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 family-oriented guy. They're set up at the new uh, at the new center up there at Depibus. Yes. They're hiring. They're hiring people. Subsplash is. This is this is a, this this is an up and coming company. And they decided to come over here and call this area home. Because they're from the west side, right? That's right. Uh, yeah. They're from the west side, but the um, owner, his wife, is, grew up also in East Wenatchee, so they 
had an affinity for this area. Uh, but what they really saw is that Wenatchee is a great place to do business. It's mm -hmm. a great place to find talent, to build workforce. And so I think they're hiring 15, uh, Something like that. 15 individuals right now. And they're committed to be in that new place at the Pibus for a year and a half, I want to say. Is that right? Yes, 18-month lease so. with uh, through the Portage Line County. I can't think of a better place to work, right? You yeah. can just go downstairs and yeah. visit Cafe Columbia. Or How did you know that's my favorite place? Right? Well, they're yeah. Guada members. We, yeah. we love the folks at Cafe Columbia. And if you're just joining us, women rule the world. Which I you kid you know. not. I knew I, I've known that for years. Yes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Women rule the world. You got all all females going to get together coming up here. Uh, Twenty. Help me out with the date. 20. Yep, it's uh, uh, July twenty fourth, which is a Thank Tuesday you. over lunch, and Guada hosts uh, three entrepreneurial panels every year. Each one has a different theme. So this one's Women Rule the World. We're featuring four entrepreneurs that you see on screen. So we've got five hundred one consultants, August Edge. Julianne Photography, and Element Salon and Spa. It's being moderated by Numerica Credit Union, so um, five women who are really making a difference in our community, and it's going to be um, both educational and inspirational. Uh, walk people through how the panel works for those of you who've never been there before. Basically, you saw Jessica Clay will be moderating, and you have the four lovely uh, young ladies up on stage, and she just asks questions, and, and they give their opinions and thoughts, and they ask each other stuff. What? Yes, um, it, it's set up to be very conversational versus a, a you know, dictated speech in mm -hmm. advance, um, but it's identifying, you know, one, how did they start their business? What were the tools and resources they needed to be successful? Um, what are some of the problem areas they've hit along the way? whether that's been because they're a woman in business and they're pioneering a new industry or um, traditional struggles that entrepreneurs going through. So, you know, what have been some of the challenges as well as advice and conversation around how our community can support entrepreneurs. You know, North Central Washington is, has a long history of entrepreneurship and growing local jobs. So how can we as a community support these women in their business? How can we get involved? and how can we facilitate and grow the next generation. Maybe we can finally bust this damn glass ceiling away. It still that, drives me nuts. That's, that's right, we're gonna be talking about the glass ceiling uh, during the panel, so uh, male or female, we want you to come out and support these entrepreneurs, be a part of um, that conversation, and a part of Guada. Yeah, let's get this glass ceiling. It's so, this is 2018, people. That's right. This is, let's just get this out of the way altogether. Um, the big, big thing, I know all of the stuff is big, but maybe the biggest of all is this bags for scholarships. This is cool. Yes, this, this, is, is, this is really exciting. So every year at the Innovator Awards Luncheon, we have offered um, a small scholarship prize to our education winners. So again, STEM Educator of the Year, Future Technology Leader, and Problem Solving Innovator. But we have partnered now with Equipped, which is a manufacturer in Twist, Washington, so local part of the uh, Central Washington community. And for every $50 you donate, um, we give you one of these beautiful equipped bags. They're the, called the last bag. Um, I use mine everywhere, mm -hmm. taking it with me to the beach, to the river, to the lake, and grocery shopping. So they carry about 90 pounds. They're very durable. You can hose them out. Um, and you. the reason they're called the last bag is because you're not supposed to ever need a reusable bag again. You get this, mm -hmm. this last bag. Um, but most importantly, when you get that, you can think about the fact that you're donating to scholarships for students. So um, we all make those philanthropic purchases. This is a really great opportunity to raise money for students in STEM. Uh, so we, let's see, we got, the, we got the, 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 the luncheon nominees are out and they're going to whittle it down to three and then the big, the big thing. Uh, summer social, so, uh, the women rule the world, bags for scholarships. I have a feeling I'm forgetting something. Am I forgetting something? I think you covered all the high points, but what I would say Please? is that Guada hosts over 30 events per year uh, for the community. So they range into three topics, STEM education, entrepreneurship, or technology. So there's a variety of ways to connect, plug in, and get informed. Uh, I encourage people to check us out online and get plugged into our newsletter so they can hear about um, all of these events and what's ahead for the future. Why aren't more businesses joining? I mean, you got over 100 members. You should have 1,000 members of Guada. Well, we'll uh, use you as our next spokesperson. But there you we're, go. We are very grateful for the community reception uh, of Guada. We've been around since 1999, but the last few years been able to really grow our programs and impact. So um, always an open invitation for more to join. Of course, I'll stand up there on stage and say, come join the Association for Ticks and Aphids. Yes. Because I'm an idiot. And I don't think a lot of people will sign up. So, well, maybe we'll have to work on your pitch. 
Guada TV is hosted by the lovely Jenny Rasa Hawkins from the Thunder Team. And uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember when the, the, when the show actually airs. I'm sorry. Uh, all the time. All the time all on the, the NCW time. Life channel. You, you so can't miss we're it. filming new episodes um, every week. It's a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Check us out there. And on demand, if you go to our website, ncblife.com, and you can go to watch our programs and watch now, and you click on Guada TV, and you're going to learn something. That's right. You'll hear about those members, you'll hear about the innovators, the educators, and uh, the community members who are championing growth in it for us. I love it when I interview people who are smarter than I am. <laughs> I love my job every day. Jenny, it's good to see you. Thank you for having I'll, me on I'll air. get your last name right one of these days. Okay. Rojanasatian. I have faith in you. Gesundheit. Okay. So, uh, we're going to take a quick break, then we'll be right back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Eastern Washington. It's a great place to call home and a great time to own a home. It's the ideal place to lay down roots for your family and your future. Giza Credit Union thinks Eastern Washington is a great place to own a home, too. That's why we offer all kinds of home loans with personal attention every step of the way. We're your home. For home loans, we're Giza Credit Union. Dear Mary Maids, please clean the kitchen and the cabinets and floors and the chairs. And I wish you could clean the dog. <sighs> Colin is now feeding himself. Thanks, Megan. Hi, Megan. No worries. We got it all cleaned up. Let's hope Colin gets past the spaghetti flinging stage soon. Till then, we've got you covered. See you next time. Merry Maids. Looking for a hands-on, high-demand job? Now is the perfect time to get trained for a career in manufacturing. Washington currently has a shortage of skilled tradespeople, and retirements are making room for more. The machining program at Wenatchee Valley College is designed to give students the foundation to excel in this precision industry. Don't wait, there are only 15 spots left. A two-year degree and a one-year certificate are available. Learn more at wvc.edu slash machining. I'm Jenny Rojanasatian, and this is Guada TV. Every week we will be bringing you a first look at North Central Washington business, tech, and education news. You'll hear from local influencers and innovators who live right here in the Valley. Together we'll discuss hot topics, current events, and resources that can support your business, our schools, and this community. Join me every week and let's get inspired. Tacos Chava has something new. Customers at Tacos Chava say it's the best Mexican food around. Nachos, enchiladas, tortas, ensaladas, and introducing camarones in many styles. You'll love the fresh salsa bar with so much selection. Are you ready for Tacos Chava? Find them at two great locations, the Wenatchee Valley Mall and ENIAC. Tacos Chava, tan delicioso. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food. Freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Now welcome back to this Monday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Koontz, once again flying solo today. News Director Steve Hare taking the day off. It is already, already 73 degrees outside of our studios. We haven't even gotten to 8 o'clock yet. We do have a heat advisory issued by the National Weather Service. It starts at 2 o'clock this afternoon and it goes until 8 o'clock on Tuesday. We are going to see triple digit temperatures today and quite possibly again tomorrow. Those forecast details will be coming up in just a couple of minutes. What you see uh, behind my left shoulder is a live shot of the current situation at the Rocky Reach Dam fire or the Rocky Reach fire as it is being officially called by the uh, Type 3 interagency team that started late Friday afternoon, early Friday evening, right along US 97A, not far from the entrance to Rocky Ridge Dam. It began to climb up the slope, got into the, uh, got into the flank of Birch Mountain and near the Swakane Canyon area, uh, initially uh, tackled on the initial uh, uh, 
run out. It was Chelan County Fire District number one, Okanagan and Wenatchee National Forest crews and the Washington uh, Department of Natural Resources. Those forces responded immediately. They worked through the night. They realized this could get big and it's pretty complex. So a type three interagency incident management team arrived first thing Saturday morning. They have taken control of the fire and that means uh, access to lots and lots of resources. Four crews, 15 engines, dozers, water tenders, 147 total personnel are on site fighting the fire in shifts. Uh, headquarters is at Sunny Slope Elementary School. That's a live shot right now from our Omi Garden camera, which is pretty close to the fire. As you can see, you don't see a lot of smoke, but when the sun goes down and you're in the right angle, you can actually see the flames. Yesterday was a very good day. Uh, the priority was to, to get the last remaining section of open perimeter enclosed, and they did a pretty good job with that. And they also did something they normally don't do. There's another shot. That's from our Waterville camera. They used a drone or what they officially call an unmanned aerial system, to use their terminology, we know them as drones. Normally, uh, firefighters, when they try to figure out where they want to put the fire lines out, they have to walk the fire lines, and it's difficult terrain, and it's dangerous. Instead, they could just, you know, take a couple of hours. Instead, they could just take the drone and fly along the perimeter of the fire. They could take video, they could take pictures, they can land the drone, they can look at it, and they can figure out, okay, where do we want to go from here? So. Uh, they had a very good day yesterday and overnight. Very little growth. It's about the same size. It's about 2,400 acres. This is critical. The cause of the fire is under investigation. There's been a lot of speculation on social media about what actually caused this fire. The cause of the fire has not been determined. It is under investigation. Nobody has been hurt. No structures have been damaged or lost. There is still level one evacuations for the Birch Mountain area and the Swaking Canyon area. The fire is only 10% contained. Their goal is to have it contained by close of business on Thursday. That is the latest map as provided by us from the Type 3 Interagency Incident Management Team. So you can see where they're at, where they built the dozers, where they plan on attacking the fire today. They did a lot, they did a lot of uh, back burning and mop up work in the interior of the fire. Uh, yesterday. They continue to do that today. Uh, once again, US 97A is open. US 97A is open uh, through the fire area there right near Rocky Reach Dam. They're asking motorists to slow down because you will have some poor visibility to slow down, but do not stop. They do not want people to pull over to the side of the road or into the shoulders or any of the lookout areas and take pictures. That simply is something they do not want you to do. What they'd really like you to do is take US 97 on the Douglas County side of the river if you plan on heading up or down uh, the Columbia River today, although US 97A on the Chelan County side of the Columbia River is open as you drive through that fire area. They're asking you to slow down, but do not stop. There's still quite a bit of firefighting activity going on today. So it was a good day. It was a good Saturday night and a good Sunday for uh, the firefighters. They're going to continue to tackle it again today. Again, no structures lost. Nobody has been injured. It's about 2,400 acres, 10 percent containment. They're hoping to get it fully contained by the end of the day on Thursday. So that is your latest. And again, the cause of the fire is unknown. It is under investigation. And the little time we have left, here is your weather forecast from the National Weather Service. Again, we do have a heat advisory. It's up and running. It will start at 2 o'clock this afternoon, goes to 8 o'clock tomorrow night. What does that mean? It's going to be hot. 101 today. Obviously, areas of smoke. Most of the smoke will be while well, the relative humidity is at its highest, and that's about now. About 3, 4, 5 o'clock this afternoon at the very hot hottest part of the day when we're in the triple digits is when the smoke will be at its least. So the smoke is more prevalent when the relative humidity is at its highest. 101 are high today. Not a record though. Our record high on this, temperature, on this day is 104. So we're not going to quite get to that. Yesterday's high, by the way, 96 degrees. So 101 today. No wind at all in the forecast today nor tonight. Clear 70 for the overnight low. 99 on Tuesday. And then a weak cold front a uh, weak cold front will come in and cool us down little by little by little, as you can see. By the time we get to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, those temperatures are back to near normal. But it's going to be very hot, downright uncomfortably hot today, tomorrow, and really spilling in to Tuesday. Heat advisory, 2 o'clock this afternoon until 8 o'clock on Tuesday night. Street Talk and other stuff with Mike Mad Dog McNaughty is coming your way live. The topic today, vaccinations, 10 o'clock this morning. Until then, everybody have a great Monday. Be safe out there. Take care. Bye-bye.